Thank you. My question is just about the first section and the history of, um, I guess, Western thought. Um, would, could the same thing, you, you mentioned uh, Christianity, um, but also uh, what would be the role of natural law? Um, like I'm thinking of like Thomas Aquinas and then like Jean Baudin, and like they all had these versions of natural law, and would that also correspond to what you were saying? Um, I'm definitely not an expert in those guys, but uh, um, uh, it was just linking with some other stuff I've read. Yeah. Uh, if, if I understand your, your, your question, you want me to, to, to um, tell a few words about uh, the law of nature uh, with, within uh, the yeah, philosophy of... The yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <it's> better. <laughs> sorry. Um, does the natural, the idea of natural law that yeah. was developed, I mean, if I remember correctly, that goes back to the Justinian Code and then yeah. Thomas Aquinas, or in French, do you, how do you say it? Tom, Thomas uh, uh, Toma Aquina? Thomas yeah. Toma Aquin, oui. Yeah. Um, and Jean Baudin, there's this idea of natural law in Western. Uh, thought uh, does that play into this egocentrism? Um, uh, yeah, but but uh, as you uh, precisely say, natural laws are not the laws of nature. Uh, uh, the law of nature, in the definition given by uh, Descartes, is uh, the the law that regulates the changes uh, uh, within nature. The natural law, are the the law for humans. And so you have to, the, to distinguish natural laws and laws of nature. And the, the, the law of nature, uh, uh, um, that uh, the law of nature uh, concerns the reign of uh, necessity, which is uh, the reign uh, uh, of uh, the natural thing, the, the, the natural world, and the natural law uh, are for humans. They are they are uh, uh, they are the base for for um, uh, uh, certain way to preempt the law, uh, but not uh, the, the, you should not uh, confuse natural law and law of nature. So uh, natural law are totally uh, compatible with a framework which separates nature from society. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you very much. Um, your presentation really interests me uh, because I'm studying the new uh, policy of ecosystem services that was implemented in Brazil just this year. And um, yeah, I was just concerned about this proposal of new approaches, like um, because in a way you were suggesting that we uh, that the approach of uh, social justice, for instance, or maybe ecofeminist approaches, would be still uh, too homocentric, and uh, maybe we should switch to an eco community approach and so on, uh, with an environmental justice uh, in focus. But I was wondering, um, how can we actually separate those things? Because and I'm, I have been reading some papers on green bonds because this new um, eco uh, environmental service policy in Brazil is allowing us to emit green bonds, communities, farmers, like uh, indigenous communities would be able to issue green bonds for international investors. So are, there are concerns about sovereignty. So I think it's a deeply political and geopolitical issue as well. And uh, I don't see in these eco uh, community approaches this focus on the, uh, on the power dispute that is embedded in, this eco, uh, in, in the ecosystem uh, defense, you know. So I was wondering, so where is uh, the role of, uh, you know, confronting this truth that we are not a community yet, uh, while the capitalist uh, ecological frontier is being pushed out of enslaving, impoverished people, out of murdering them to push further this uh, mode of production. 
Um, I don't know, I think it, when we do not address these issues, they just seem too vague. And I also wanted to ask if you, um, is, if you are also familiar with the world ecology approach that is more related to um, political economy and, uh, um, and it's like it's more concerned with the impacts uh, within the ex of the expansion of the ecological frontier within the capitalism and so on. So wouldn't it, wouldn't it be in more interest to uh, target capitalism first, like to do it more politically? Um, these are the two questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your question. Uh, I think that uh, if you, uh, th the table is, is not really easy to, <laughs> to, to, to read, but um, the, the point you, you raised about uh, the necessity to link, I would say, um, environmental ethics and political ecology, may, maybe. I think it's um, something that um, uh, a philosopher like uh, <coughs> Karen Merchant uh, totally uh, uh, endorses, uh, totally defends. Uh, and uh, it's uh, just because I think that too often environmental ethics is reduced to the defense of intrinsic value of nature, which is mainly an a political approach, mainly uh, 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 something that is important because uh, uh, I think that uh, to overcome anthropocentrism in uh, uh, moral philosophy uh, is uh, uh, something really important. But when you think that environmental ethics is only about intrinsic value of nature, you miss the point that you have to articulate that overcoming of, non -anthrop of anthropocentrism with political ecology. And you were uh, talking about ecofeminism. It's just uh, uh, precisely, Karen Merchant is a, a, a ecofeminist philosopher, and she, in, in her works, and in one of her uh, most famous book, The Death of Nature, she uh, uh, precisely wants to show how uh, you, you have to link the domination of nature, the domination of women, and the way these two domination are precise, precisely related to the development of capitalism and to the development of modern science. So it's just exactly uh, uh, the point uh, you, you, you want to, to, to make. Uh, and I think you're right. Uh, uh, we cannot separate environmental ethic and political ecology. They have been uh, uh, separated for a while uh, because, uh, again, environmental ethics sometimes uh, look like a metaphysical uh, reflection about uh, uh, the intrinsic value of nature. But uh, uh, my point here is to show how environmental ethics could be understood, understand as, understood as deeply political. If you, if you understand how it uh, dismisses the philosophical anthropology that is, uh, um, that underlies uh, uh, um, the political and economical model uh, which are dominant uh, today, actually, uh, currently. And uh, 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 that point is uh, uh, really important. So we have to link, to relate environmental ethic, the overcoming of anthropocentrism, and question about environmental justice, uh, political ecology, and uh, uh, the criticism of uh, capitalism, or at least uh, the uh, state uh, of uh, the capitalism we uh, know. And the second part of your question was uh, related to the, to, to the first. If we, I, I remember you want to, you suggest that it's maybe uh, uh, more 
strategical, uh, more uh, it's to criticize capitalism uh, before uh, 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 dealing with the question of the overcoming of anthropocentrism. And I think uh, uh, maybe you could you could. Uh, had a few, a few exactly words. to to target the imbalance, the inequality that it yeah. provokes, the dominance. Like what is uh, what is eco justice? Um, ec this ecological ethic, eco community has to say about the imbalance between nations. The fact that we are produ like the south is producing for the north. Like um, how does it address it? Yeah. Uh, again, I, I think that um, if you if you look at um, ecofeminism, uh, the the current uh, uh, show that um, these inequities and the domination of nature are deeply related, and uh, that uh, for too long they have been uh, dealt. Uh, they have been. Um, approach as independent uh, issues, but uh, ecofeminism uh, has convincingly proved that they are linked. So I think that we should not oppose um, the criticism of anthropocentrism and the, criti the criticism of inequities of environmental injustice. I think they are uh, they have to be uh, attacked uh, together. Any other question? So I was just wondering, because you were also mentioning uh, Clive Spash, yeah. um, because I'm from the Vienna track, we had uh, Professor Spash as our director. I was just wondering whether you also see naive objectivism, which is quite widespread, in, especially in economics, as one of the key hurdles of, like, of what you have as your title, like the, the see, seeing the social and the ecological together and seeing the like ontological embeddedness of economy in society and and nature, and this this complete contrast which we have in 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 economics, where we've got could a naive. Could you just <laughs> say thank you? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you you got what I was saying before. Yeah, then? yeah. Uh, okay. Um, uh, yeah. Basically, the, yeah. The, could, this could, could you re repeat the, the the first part? Because the first part. Uh, okay. Sure, yeah. Um, one second, I'll, I'll frame it differently as yeah. well. So, um, I was just wondering whether you also see this naive objectivism where, which we have in, in a lot of, especially mainstream economics, yeah. as also one of the main hurdles to uh, linking ecological and social or also economic systems. Yeah. Um, whereas what we really have to do is taking this more critical realist approach with an ontological realism but an epistemic relativism or constructivism to really look at the the issues in a in a way that's um, taking this political like clearly political and emancipatory approach to these issues and like working on this transformative change you, which you were mentioning yeah um, yeah and whether, whether basically whether you see this this problem of naive objectivism yeah as well uh, I think that um Thank you for, for, for your question. I, I think that uh, that was um, uh, a point I, I, I wanted to, to insist on um, uh, with, um, with that uh, quote of, uh, of Clay Spash um, about the fact that um, ecosystem service approach um, has been uh, um, promoted as a way to objectify, to, 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 um, to ground uh, the uh, protection of nature on 
what uh, could appear as uh, robust uh, uh, theories and scientific uh, uh, results. Uh, and just uh, as if uh, uh, these, uh, um, this framework was totally neutral uh, and was politically neutral because uh, it was only mainly based uh, on quantification, on quantitative approach, and uh, it, 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 um, it seems to be science and only science. And what uh, Spash uh, uh, wanted to, to highlight, and the, the first uh, quote that I, I didn't read is, one of the deepest illusions surrounding the practice of cost-benefit analysis is that it avoids value judgment. It's, it's not true. And, but the point is that we have to, to, to acknowledge the fact uh, that your research, your, your model um, endorse uh, some value but you have to uh, explicitly uh, uh, declare your, your values. And uh, I think uh, on that point, um, the criticism of uh, SPASH is very efficient and very important. If we, if we want to really transform the framework uh, in which we approach this question of the coupling between ecological and social system. Because I, I, I think that, um, as a philosopher, I, I work in a lab of ecology. So my colleagues are, uh, most of my colleagues are ecologists. And I feel that they are really um, on the verge uh, uh, of um, operating a, a, a radical shift, some of them because they, they, they just they think exactly the same uh, as what Washington uh, 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 was uh, saying in, in the paper I quote. They think that ecosystem services approaches uh, was, is somehow misleading. Not totally uh, 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 useless, inefficient, but somehow misleading. And, and, and they are seeking for a new pathway, seeking for a new way to, to think the interdependence between humans and nature. And uh, I, I think that we, 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 there are lots of, um, there is a lot of work uh, uh, to do this because um, very often uh, when uh, some of these uh, ecologists want to, 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 to change uh, uh, the pathway, they focus on the question of mm, trying to uh, take into account the intrinsic value of nature. Uh, and that, that's the main point uh, uh, they, they often um, uh, highlight. Uh, and we, we, we have to, to take into account the whole picture of environmental ethics that is not only a way to rethink nature, but also a way to rethink ourselves as humans and to, to, to depart from the philosophical anthropology of um, social atomism, atomicism. Uh, and that, that point is very important, and, and that's why I think it's very important to, to uh, read again uh, some of uh, the works of a philosopher like uh, uh, Carolyn Merchant, because uh, I think that we can find uh, uh, some of the answer uh, we are searching for in that kind of books. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question? Otherwise, we have many things to think. <laughs> so thank you, Remy. Thank, thank you. you.